G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel as we continue this series where I'm predicting teams best 22 this is a three years from now. I don't know why my brain just decided to stop in the middle of a sentence there, but today we are doing North Melbourne. Now, to explain this pro uh, premise properly for those who haven't watched all the videos in the series, uh, the idea is to try and guess what their best 22 will look like in three years, obviously, specifically round one uh, in 2027. However, um, I will make it clear while I say predict, the premise of the video is not to actually try and get it right. Uh, it's more forecasting what their team could look like three years from now, assuming they don't draft anyone or you know trade any win in, free agency, whatever. And the purpose of it is to kind of map out what players will still be there, what players will be in their prime, which ones will be at the end of their careers, and ultimately as well, what kind of list gaps will these clubs still have in three years' time, assuming they don't address them. So I've compiled all the videos in this series into a playlist called uh, AFL Teams Three Years From Now. And this is also in addition to a recent video series I've done uh, where I go through each individual club and I talk about their current best 22s and how I forecast 2024 happening for them. So if you want to find more North Melbourne content, I have done a video of that nature as well. Before I crack into the ruse, uh, if you don't mind considering subscribing to this YouTube channel, uh, we make a lot of AFL content. I've been working pretty hard over the off season. I make some cricket content. We do live Live streams and stuff like that as well and of course it'll be uh, footy non-stop th throughout the 2024 season as well so if you're interested in that sort of thing please consider subscribing cool all right let's crack into the ruse now uh, if you haven't seen this series before the way we usually start is to look through their list and pick out which players are likely to be too old and therefore retired in three years time from now now I've generally speaking had anywhere between five and like ten uh, retirements for certain clubs up to this point, I've worked through the Bulldogs, Eagles, Sydney, St Kilda, Richmond, Port Adelaide, and now North. And this is the least retirements I have for one club, um, because you know, generally speaking, North's list is quite young. They don't really have too many veterans. They just got rid of Goldstein uh, to Essendon, of course. So I have three retirements, and you know, one of them is probably speculative anyway. So the two that are locked in would be Liam Shields, who would be 35 by round one. Hugh Greenwood would also be 35 by round one. And Aiden Call will be 32 and then turn 33 that year. And I suppose he's a sneaky chance, but I've eliminated him from this analysis anyway. That sounds brutal, doesn't it? Uh, okay, there's one player there as well who is still over 30 and will be 32 by round one of this season. Luke McDonald. I have included him because I do, you know, this is kind of a gut feel thing. I think Luke McDonald, as a leader of this football club, obviously, um, will still be in that best 22. But again, that's subjective. Um, but generally speaking, there's not a lot of movement out of this team. And to be honest, it's not massively different from the 22 that I predicted for 2024. It's just a case of letting them mature. So let's have a look at this 22 that I've now got there, as you can see on the screen. Now, if you haven't seen the series before, I will explain what the colors and numbers mean. Obviously, that's shaped like a best 22. And I will acknowledge I have 24 players in there because I just thought uh, having a couple of extra players wouldn't hurt to help the analysis along. So, uh, first of all, let's talk about the colors. The colors represent the extent to which I'm confident they will still be best 22 in three years. Um, if they're green, that means I'm pretty damn confident or quite confident. And if they're yellow, it means they're speculative or borderline. Um, it doesn't mean that I don't rate them. It just means that it's unclear, to be honest. And there's a range of mitigating factors. And in some cases, I've considered positional competition in that team. So for instance, if uh, there's a handful of key backs vying for the same position, then they'll probably go yellow, for instance. Okay, so let's talk about this team. And let's start with the defense. Now, this looks a little bit different because now Griffin Lurg is back in this analysis. I excluded him from the 2024 one because of his ACL, but let's talk about the key defenders. First of all, I've only picked, well, I picked three actually, sorry, as Toby Pink, who hasn't played a game for him yet, is probably the most likely third tall in this lineup. I'll tell you who I left out. There's Callan Dawson, who I don't know too much about, and Charlie Combin. Um, again, a, a forward converted into a back, so I don't have a strong opinion on whether Toby Pink really takes that mantle. But he is mature at his 28. I, uh, you know, it's kind of a line ball decision that. But Logue is fairly locked in. Will Dawson is a sneaky chance to be ready by 21, but he's a bit of a long-term prospect. So uh, again, I can't imagine he would have played too much football in his first three seasons. Um, and this is a good time to remember to tell you what the numbers mean. So uh, again, if you haven't seen it, the first number in there uh, with the, under the bracket is their age. And the second one, is by it is my estimate of how many games experience they will have. Both of these numbers will be based on round one of 2027. So how I've projected games experience is if they're established best 22 players, 
I will estimate that they probably play 20 games a season for three years, allowing for injuries and suspension, which means that if they're established best 22, are probably plus 60 to their current game tallies. In Will Dawson's case, this is probably a good example of um, other ones where I've had to scale it differently. Young key positional prospect, 10 games in three years, it might even be generous. You know, Hopefully he's not called upon uh, too much in his first three years, but that's probably somewhat realistic, but we are guessing here. So there's Will Dawson and Logue as the defenders. I've left Luke McDonald in there uh, for some experience in that defense. And the running defenders uh, gave Riley Hardiman and Josh Gota. I know Josh Gota is potentially going to transition into a midfielder, but we'll get to the midfield, and I don't know if I'd back him in to really win a spot in that midfield as a starter. So as a running defender, that makes sense. And Riley Hardiman, I think, has some nice talent and uh, will be 22 by round one of that year. So probably would have played about 35 games. I think there's nice speed and run and carry. I did force Zach Fisher out of that spot, um, who I've chucked on the bench there. Again, I'm not really too sure. Um, Zach Fisher could be there. He might not. Um, but Riley Hardiman, I think, and Josh Gota are a good chance to still be there, I'd say. So let's talk about the midfield, and this is their strength, I would say. So the back line's okay. The, the midfield is good. Luke Davies, Uniac, George Wardlaw, and Taron Thomas. So I think that's the same starting three I had in the 24 um, best 22 that I made. Bailey Scott as well on the wing. So I think the midfield mix is, is there, and it doesn't really need to be touched up too much more considering as well. I put McKercher on the on the wing there. Will he be a wingman or an on-baller? I'm not too sure. But uh, as a skinny kid who plays outside, and I think he could be a gun wingman. Maybe he rotates on ball, probably. Uh, but he still makes the team, and I think by 21, he will be a bit of a young gun, absolutely. So the midfield's good. Will Phillips and Jai Simkin, probably the next most logical recruits. Again, it's it's not a team that's seen much transition in or out here. Um, some of the mids that I left out as well, I just don't know too much about. Uh, I mean, we know about Darcy Tucker, but there's guys like Blake Drury, Cooper Harvey that could you know backfill, but I, I still think at 29, Simkin's going to be there. I still think Will Phillips will be there. And Dylan Stevens, I chucked on the on the bench, uh, purely because I just think he's not quite as talented as any of the guys I have on either wing there, Bailey Scott or Colby McKercher. So, um, but, you know, decent chance to be there, but I don't think absolutely locked in. So let's talk about the forward line, which is, it has a lot of firepower in it. So the ones that I've locked in are obviously Larky, who will be 28. Sheasel as a forward mid, I still like that transition for him. Zerha should still be there at 28, and Zane Dersmer as well, who will be an interesting one to watch because he's kind of like a powerful lead-up mark player. But he's 190 centimeters. I've just got this funny feeling he could basically play as a third tall. Like, he, he will probably get to, like, 193, 194, uh, in my opinion, based on just pure nothing. <laughs> Now, nah, but obviously players still keep growing after they're, um, after they're drafted, and he plays tall as well. That was kind of my logic. So if he gets to 192, 193, you know, he'll probably be, he'll be taller than Jack Darling. So he could kind of play as that mismatch key forward type. Then, uh, okay, so then there's two other spots up for grabs. Curtis, again, he's not absolutely locked in, and it was tough between him and Eddie Ford, who I think uh, I, I left out of the 22 for round one of 24, but I still think he's, he's shown a bit. Uh, and Curtis I do like. So I went for Curtis over the top, um, but probably going to be there. Maybe I could have put it in green, but I just think there's a difference between Paul Curtis and uh, some of the other talents I've got there. So then at full forward, I've got Finn Barmalia. Now I know I'll acknowledge I didn't even have him in my uh, best 22 for 2024. Uh, I did know they drafted him, but I just missed him in my thing. Uh, but I didn't realize he was mature age. So when you consider who else might take that second key forward spot, it's really not obvious. Um, I kind of had mainly com competing with someone like Coleman Jones. I even had Zane Dersma as full forward for a little bit there. Decided to take a punt on Mailey, but again, I don't really know too much about him. The other factor is I just don't think North have anyone else obvious. So that one's just a bit of a punt. Same thing with Toby Pink, uh, but that is the reality of North Melbourne's key position stocks. They're not, they're not great. Um, okay, let's talk about the bench. Uh, I've got... Uh, Eddie Ford, like I mentioned, Braden George. Now, Braden George is probably one player with the potential to absolutely be a locked-in best six of their forward line, uh, but he hasn't played a game yet, so I'm reluctant to, to have any more confidence in that, but he is high-end potential, and I know North fans like him, but I do remember him from his draft year, and he does have lots of talent. So he should be around the mark for this, um, but generally speaking, it's a decent 24 there. Um, I, like I said, I'm still not convinced about 
the full forward position, naturally. No, no one should be convinced by a rookie that hasn't played a game yet. Uh, and equally down back, it looks better with Logan in it, but with Core gone. Uh, Will Dawson, obviously, is speculative, so we don't know. But the midfield is great. I think the medium-sized forwards are great. Running defenders, they've got a bit of variety now. Uh, the young rucks are good as well. So there's uh, Cherry, obviously, in the team. Uh, I don't think Cherry's necessarily outstanding. But uh, Taylor Goat is one prospect that I like. But at 21, I don't quite have him in this team. And But there was a lot of also medium forwards that I've left out of this. So Curtis Taylor, unfortunately, as well, I just couldn't fit in. They've got other more talented forwards, in my opinion. Tom Powell, Jaden Stevenson, uh, Robert Hansen to a lesser extent, Charlie Lazaro. Um, that is that is a lot of medium-sized forwards. And it, it also doesn't help that Sheasel I've, I've put into this forward line because he played as a defender last year. But there's some variety there. You know, if between Curtis, Ford, and George, they've just drafted Dersma, Zerha, Sheasel into it. Like, there's some variety there that could be very dangerous in the forward line. As a final note, like how competitive will this North Melbourne team be in 2024? That's a good question. A lot depends on the development of their tools. Again, as you can see there, Will Dawson will have played 10 games. Toby Pink will have played 40. The midfield has actually probably got a good amount of experience. That, that part of the ground, I don't think they're lacking at all. Uh, and their forward line as well has got some, some older heads in there. And ideally, someone like a Dersma, someone like a McKercher, they'll be at 50 plus games. Same thing with Wardlaw. So hopefully all things go sweet for in terms of their development. Uh, but I'd probably be looking at trading in another key forward and a key back as well. Also, before I end the video, I, I forgot, I didn't mention Biggie Nguyen as well. Another player that could easily be there as a third tall uh, key defender there. Jackson Archer is another player missed out. Miller Bergman. So th there's depth of talent there. It's just a matter of seeing which ones rise to the top because there's genuine competition there. But anyway, guys, I'm going to finish the video there. Um, let me know in the comments what I got, got right and got wrong. Obviously, as North fans, you, I'm sure you know your own players more than I do. But I just thought this would be an interesting exercise and there's some interesting takeaways there as well. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.